Good day everyone, Dr. Polaris here. Alocotosauria is a clade of early archosauromorph reptiles from the middle to late Triassic, known from Asia, Africa, North America and Europe. The group was first described and named when a new monophyletic clade of specialised herbivorous archosauromorphs was recovered by Sterling J. Nesbitt et al. in 2015. The name Alocotosauria is derived from the Greek meaning strange reptiles, in reference to this unexpected grouping with a high diversity of features typically associated with herbivory. This is certainly an accurate name for these animals, as most are highly unusual in terms of appearance and lifestyle. Most were herbivores, ranging from the green, iguana-sized and lizard-like Trilophosaurus to the cow-sized Tringosaurus. The more derived members of this lineage possessed a diverse array of odd anatomical features, sometimes converging on other archosaur groups. The aforementioned Shringosaurus possessed a pair of ceratopsian-like brow horns and superficially sauropod-like teeth, while the truly bizarre Pteroterpeton had an elongated and downturned snout, making the animal resemble a reptilian anteater. Nesbitt et al. defined the group as a stem-based taxon containing Azendosaurus madagascarensis and Trilophosaurus butaneri, and all taxa more closely related to them than to Tanistrophius, Proterosuchus, or Rhynchosaurus. Therefore, Alicotosauria includes the families Azendosauridae and Trilophosauridae by definition, as well as the potentially more basal Pamelaria, which is closer to them than to other early archosauromorphs. Pamelaria is the earliest known Alicotosaur, dating to the Anisian of India. The genus had a sprawling posture, long legs, and a small pointed skull with nostrils positioned at the very tip of the snout. Among early archosauromorphs, Pamelaria is most similar to Prolocerta from the early Triassic of South Africa and Antarctica. Both have historically been placed in the family Prolocertidae. However, in the 2015 analysis by Nesbitt et al., the animal was found to be a member of Alicotosauria. Based on known specimens, Pamelaria reached a length of about 2 metres. The neck, made up of six thick and elongated cervical vertebrae, comprises much of this length. The limbs are robust, roughly equal in size, and sprawl outward from the body. The pectoral girdle is also large and plate-like. The tail is thick near its base and narrows closer to the tip. The skull of Pamelaria is small and pointed with small conical teeth. The neck of Pamelaria is probably held above the rest of the body in life. The tail of Pamelaria is thick and heavy, possibly acting as a counterbalance to the long neck. The tail is tall near its base due to high neural arches above the vertebrae and long chevrons below them. The equal length of the fore and hind limbs suggests that Pamelaria was quadrupedal. The limb bone joins loosely with the pectoral and pelvic girdles. Their shape indicates that they sprawled outward in life, giving Pamelaria a posture similar to that of lizards. Pamelaria would have rotated its limbs horizontally to move, pushing off from its outermost toe as living lizards do. The small conical teeth that line the edges of the upper and lower jaws and the surface of the palate suggests that Pamelaria was insectivorous. Insect burrows are common in the Yarrapalli formation, suggesting that insects would have been an abundant food source. Although initially thought to be the most basal member of Alocotosauria, this genus has later been considered an early member of the family Azendosauridae, alongside other long-necked but more herbivorous forms. Speaking of which, perhaps the most impressive of all Alocotosaurs was also a member of this family, Shringosaurus. This genus name, meaning horned lizard, from the Sanskrit shringa, meaning horn, and ancient Greek saurus, lizard, is an extinct genus of archosauromorph reptile from the Middle Triassic of India. It is known from the type and only species, Shringosaurus indicus, which is known from the Denwa formation in the state of Madhya Pradesh. Like some ceratopsid dinosaurs, Shringosaurus had two large horns over its eyes that faced up and forwards from its skull. These horns were likely used for display, and possibly during fights with others, much like what has been inferred for the horns of ceratopsians like Triceratops. Shringosaurus also bears similarities to sauropodomorph dinosaurs, 
such as its long neck and teeth, and likely occupied a similar ecological niche as a large browsing herbivore before they evolved. Shringosaurus was a large-bodied quadruped, with an estimated body length of 3 to 4 metres. It closely resembles the related Azendosaurus, with a small boxy head on a long neck and a large barrel-shaped body with deep shoulders and ribs, sprawled to semi-sprawled limbs and a short tail. Aside from being notably larger than Azendosaurus, Shringosaurus is most recognisable for its long curving brow horns, as well as having a proportionately shorter and thicker neck than other Azendosaurids, with much taller neural spines in the neck and over the shoulders. The skull of Shringosaurus is not completely known, but what has been preserved indicates that the skull was small and boxy, with a short deep snout with rounded jaw tips and bony nostrils fused into a single opening. This is broadly similar to the completely known skull of Azendosaurus. However, the lower jaw of Shringosaurus has a more conspicuous taper towards the tip compared to the deep downturn dentary of Azendosaurus. Smaller and younger individuals had smaller, more gracile horns, indicating that the horns did not fully develop until the animals were mature. Interestingly, at least one small specimen lacks horns altogether, whereas another similarly small-sized specimen had tiny but well-developed horns. It is suggested, then, that Shringosaurus was sexually dimorphic, and possibly the females lacked horns. The horns themselves have a rough, grooved texture that implies they were covered with the keratinous sheath of horn in life, also like Ceratopsians, and so would likely have been longer than the bony cores indicate. The teeth of Shringosaurus are low and leaf-shaped, with large denticles on either side, similar in shape to those of Azendosaurus, but lacking the prominent expansion above the root, like the teeth of Pamelaria. Because the skull and jaws are incompletely known, the total tooth count of Shringosaurus is uncertain. Like its close relative, the teeth were leaf-shaped and serrated. The horns of Shringosaurus are its most prominent feature, and so some focus was placed on their role and function in its initial description. The horns were likely products of sexual selection, as mentioned above, and were not primarily for defence or species recognition as has been proposed for the head ornamentation of dinosaurs. This would be more similar to modern bovids, but unlike ceratopsian dinosaurs, and indeed other archosauromorphs, in the upper Denwa formation, Shringosaurus coexisted with the lungfish Ceratodus and a variety of temnospondyl amphibians. Other terrestrial vertebrates included a large, undescribed rhynchosaur and two species of dicynodonts, a mid-sized species similar to Canimeria, and the larger species interpreted as similar to Stachylaria. The environment is interpreted as representing a dry, semi-arid floodplain with slow-moving rivers that periodically burst their banks. Rainfall was seasonal, and the environment experienced droughts that dried up ephemeral rivers and ponds. The large body size of Shringosaurus, and its similarity to sauropodomorphs, including its jaws and teeth, as well as a superficially similar body shape, suggests that it occupied the role of large, relatively high browsing herbivore in its environment, similar to what is suggested for Azendosaurus, its closest relative. That genus was very similar to Shringosaurus in appearance and lifestyle, although it was smaller and lacked brow horns. The type species, Azendosaurus larusii, was described and named by Jean-Michel de Thuy in 1972 based on a partial jaw fragment and some teeth from Morocco. A second species from Madagascar, Azendosaurus madagascarensis, was first described in 2010 by John Flynn and colleagues from a multitude of specimens representing almost the entire skeleton. The generic name, Azendo lizard, is for the village of Azendo, a local village where it was first discovered in the Atlas Mountains. It was a bulky quadruped that, quite unlike other archosauromorphs, had a relatively short tail and robust limbs that were held in an odd mixture of sprawled hind limbs and raised forelimbs. It had a long neck and proportionately small head, with remarkably sauropod-like jaws and teeth. Azendosaurus used to be classified as a herbivorous dinosaur, 
at first as an Ornithischian, but more often as a prosauropod sauropodomorph. This was based only on its jaws and teeth, which shared derived features typically found in herbivorous dinosaurs. The complete skeletal material from Madagascar, however, revealed more basal characteristics ancestral to Archosauromorpha, and that Azendosaurus was not a dinosaur at all. Instead, it was found that Azendosaurus was actually a more primitive Archosauromorph that had convergently evolved many features of the jaws and skeleton shared with the later giant sauropod dinosaurs. It was found to be a member of the newly recognised group of specialised herbivorous archosauromorphs that were named the Allocotosauria. It is also the namesake and typifier of its own family, the Azendosauridae. Initially it was the only member, but the family now includes the other similar Allocotosaurs, such as the larger horned Azendosaurid Shringosaurus, as mentioned above. Several other groups of archosauromorphs also adapted to herbivory in the Triassic, sometimes with dinosaur-like teeth that also caused confusion in their classification. Azendosaurus and sauropodomorphs likely independently evolved to fill a similar ecological niche as long-necked, relatively high-browsing herbivores in their environments. However, Azendosaurus predates the large late Triassic sauropodomorphs it resembles by several million years and did not evolve similar body plans under the same environmental conditions. It may then have been one of the first herbivores to fill the high browsing role that only large sauropodomorphs were thought to occupy during the Triassic, expanding the known ecological diversity of herbivorous archosauromorphs outside dinosaurs. Azendosaurus is also significant as it may be one of the earliest endothermic archosauromorphs known and suggests that a warm-blooded metabolism was ancestral to the later archosaurs, including the dinosaurs. Azendosaurus was a stocky, mid-sized reptile, estimated to be roughly 2 to 3 meters long. Its posture was semi-sprawled, with sprawling hind limbs and slightly elevated forelimbs. The limbs themselves are relatively short and particularly robust, with digits that are shorter and stouter compared to other early archosauromorphs each with notably large, curved claws on all four feet. The leaf-shaped teeth of Azendosaurus are clearly suited for a herbivorous lifestyle, and microwear on the teeth of Azendosaurus madagascarensis suggests that they were used for browsing on vegetation that was not especially tough or woody, preferring softer vegetation. The microwear patterns also show that it used a simple up-and-down motion of the jaw, and did not use a complex jaw movements to chew its food like ornithischian dinosaurs. In 2019, thin slices were cut from the humerus, femur and tibia of specimens attributed to Azendosaurus larusii for histological examination of the microscopic bone structure to try and determine the growth rate of Azendosaurus. The vascular density in all three limb bones was found to be comparable to those of fast-growing birds and mammals and the types of bone tissue included, particularly energy-consuming fibrolamellar bone tissue, were interpreted as indicating a high metabolic rate that was in the range of living birds and mammals. It was inferred then that, like birds and mammals, Azendosaurus would also likewise have been endothermic. High resting metabolic rates similar to this have been observed in other derived archosauromorphs, such as Prolacerta, and analysis suggests that endothermy may have been ancestrally present in all archosauromorphs as far back as their common ancestor with allocotosaurs. By contrast, the related Trilophosaurus was previously found to not have any fibrolamellar bone tissue at all, and was so inferred to have grown much more slowly. Trilophosaurus was the type species of its own family, Trilophosauridae, which were the sister group to the Azendosaurids. Compared to the latter, Trilophosaurus was a rather lizard-like animal, lacking the bulk and long necks of their cousins. Known from the late Triassic of North America, it was a herbivore up to 2.5 metres long. It had a short, unusually heavily built skull, equipped with massive, broad, flattened cheek teeth, with sharp shearing surfaces for cutting through tough plant material. Teeth are absent from the premaxilla and front of the lower jaw, which in life were probably equipped with a horny beak. In overall lifestyle and appearance, Trilophosaurus may have resembled a large ground-dwelling iguana, 
and, like those modern lizards, may have been a low-browsing herbivore. It lived in a dry, arid environment characterised by intense wet and dry seasons, with a contemporaneous fauna that included the large Rhyosuchian Postosuchus, the armoured herbivorous Aetosaur Desmatosuchus, and the early theropod dinosaur Chindisaurus. A very closely related genus, Spinosuchus, was also found at the same time and place. Another close relative, Pteroterpeton, is known from the late Triassic of Nova Scotia and is the most bizarre of all alocotosaurs. How could it not be strange, with a name meaning wonderful creeping thing? It has many unique features seen in no other related form, including an elongated toothless snout and large openings for the nostrils. Because of this, Pteroterpeton was initially placed in its own family. Newer studies generally place it within Trilophosauridae, however. Pteroterpeton had an unusual appearance compared with all other early archosauromorphs. Members of the genus had a long skull with no teeth at the ends of the upper or lower jaws. At the back of the jaws are a set of small, sharp, closely spaced teeth. They continue below the level of the eye, an unusual trait among early archosauromorphs. The simple femur and compact hip supports the interpretation that Pteroterpeton had a sprawling gait. However, the modified and expanded ilium suggests that Pteroterpeton's hind limb musculature was well adapted for protracting and retracting during more erect forms of locomotion. Some paleontologists have argued that the expanded leg musculature in rhynchosaurs was an adaptation for scratch digging rather than an upright posture. While this may apply to the thick-legged rhynchosaurs, Digging was less likely for Pteroterpeton, which had rather slender hind limbs by comparison. What this animal was doing while alive has never been convincingly explained, but it is possible that the animal was something like a reptilian anteater or pangolin, poking its long snout into the earth in order to catch insects or other small invertebrates. However, this is purely speculation as this genus is one of the strangest and most mysterious of all Triassic archosauromorphs, which is really saying a lot. And on that note, it is time to end today's video. Thanks for watching everyone. Next week I'll be covering another British cryptid, the Beast of Brass Knocker Hill. See you again soon. Cheerio.